I just love how hard light can really create that sort of graphic feel. And I've actually had quite a few clients, you know, ask specifically for that look. Right. And I think people think it's really difficult, but it's actually surprising how easy it is to create. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to grow your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And today we are doing a collaboration here with my friend Lauren from That Sage and we're talking about hard light. Now Lauren, when do you use hard light in your food photography? So I, I love working with hard light. I once had a client, actually a drinks client, and they wanted um, some sort of summery, outdoorsy photos. And it was really great to use hard light to create some really fun, like specular highlights and give that sort of sunny day feel. Oh man, that must've been a lot of fun to play with. It was, yeah, it was. And I think, yeah, it's just fun to show people how easy this can be. So because we get asked about this style of lighting a lot, we figured what better opportunity than to team up and to create a series of two videos together in collaboration that share with you all the ins and the outs of how to create a hard light look for yourself uh, so that you can start to play with this style of lighting as well. So if you keep watching this video, I'm gonna dive into the details of what you wanna consider if you're gonna be shooting with natural light in terms of the windows that you're using, or if you're shooting artificial, what kind of modifiers you wanna use. And then Lauren, what exactly are you gonna be sharing on your video? So we are gonna be talking all about direction and distance. So how those things affect your shadows and also how you can really use shadows in hard light photos to create a really striking look. So it's gonna be fun. But now also as a part of this series, we wanna involve you in creating this hard light look. So we are actually kicking off a challenge, a week long challenge together. So be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where we share the details about how you can enter that and participate in our channels. And then also be sure to check out Lauren's video so that you can get all of the tips and tricks so that you can make a fabulous hard light look for your food photography. So I'm gonna take you through three different setups to demonstrate how we create hard light, both with natural light as well as artificial light. But before we do that, I just wanna real quick define hard light so that you know what you're looking for and what, what are some of the hallmarks of it. And really, it's all in the shadows, that if we look at these images and you look at the shadows, how much of a gradient is present? Like that transition from light to dark, does that happen gradually in a gradient fashion or is that like really stark and immediate? If if it's really stark and immediate and we've got a hard line, you can think a hard line gives us hard light, right? So it's the hard light is creating those really intense shadows that have very little gradient to them. So what determines how much of a gradient there is or how hard that light is? It is all based on the size of your light source. The larger the light, the more gradient, the softer the light is going to be, as opposed to the smaller the light source, the harder the light is going to be, the less transition, the less gradient you're gonna have that hard light look. So when we're trying to create images with hard light, we want a small light source. So as far as demonstrating this, let's start off with natural light. Of course, natural light being the sun. Now you think about the sun and you're like, the sun is gigantic, right? It is, but the sun is also very, very far away. So when we have our food set up and if the sun is visible in direct line of sight of that food, that's gonna create some hard light because though the sun is large, it's far away. So in relative size to our subject, it's actually really, really small. So like here with this setup, this is two o'clock in the afternoon in my studio these windows are west facing and the sun is directly visible in the sky and it's directly then hitting the food creating that hard light look whereas three hours earlier the sun was on the other side of the house so it wasn't in direct line of sight of the food now all of that light is still present though from the sun right and that's coming in then from this large window and so then in that case our window is our primary light source and in relative comparison to the size of our food that window is really large and we've got light evenly streaming in from that large window then that's creating really soft lighting but now real quick, let's go back to that 2 p.m. situation where we had the hard light because the sun was in direct line of sight of the food, creating that hard light look because it's a small light source. Let's say, for example, it was a cloudy day. This day here in Arizona, it was not a cloudy day. There was not really a cloud in the sky. So we had that direct sun hitting. But had there been clouds in the sky, what the clouds do is they make a larger light source because they are physically closer to our scene and they're covering a big part of the sky. And so they're taking that 
that very small sun and turning it into a really big light source, which is then creating that softer feeling of light for us. The other thing that the clouds are doing is they are also diffusing that light, that the rays from the sun are very direct and intense, but then as soon as they pass through those clouds, they then start kind of pinging off in different directions so that they fall much softer onto our subject. But all that said, if you're trying to achieve the hard light look with natural light, you want to make sure that your subject that you're seeing is in direct line of sight of the sun. But now here's what's cool. All of these same exact principles apply when we come on over to artificial light. This is why I'm always saying light is light. It doesn't matter if it's the sun or if it's from a bulb, it's all the same thing. That the larger the light source, the softer the shadows, the smaller the light source, the harder the shadows. So for example, I've got these shishito peppers and these Thai chilies, and I want a harder light look for this. So I'm gonna use one of my smaller modifiers. If you see my behind the scenes, you see that I'm notorious for using really giant modifiers. Like I've got a seven foot umbrella and I absolutely love like my 150 centimeter octagon box. But in this case, this is a 24 inch round beauty dish. The shape in this situation doesn't really matter. More or less, it's about the size. And so 24 inches is relatively small for something like this. And so what we can see is when we go ahead and we take that shot, we are shooting with flash here, you can see that we've got a harder light look. But if we really study those shadows, there is just a little bit of gradient there. And why is that? Well, again, we talked about that diffusion material. So the same as how the clouds act and kind of creating that diffusion and breaking up that direct light coming from the sun, diffusion material is doing the same exact thing in this situation with this beauty dish. But now let's go even harder with the light. So we had 24 inches before, let's go with something even smaller. Now you could do this with like a bare speed light or a bare bulb, depending on the artificial light that you're shooting. In this situation, I'm gonna use my studio strobe and then I'm going to attach a reflector to it. Now reflectors come in various widths and sizes. You can get really small ones, larger ones. Again, the larger it is, the wider it is, then that's also making a larger light source. But again, these are all pretty small. And so I've got this reflector here and I'm going to go ahead and shoot it here on this scene. And you can see we've got even more intensity, even less gradient in those shadows because there's no diffusion going on. We've got a really small light source, but it's really creating a fun, unique look. And I absolutely love playing with this. Like if you are a soft light junkie, I recommend playing with some hard light because it's really going to take you outside of your comfort zone. It's really going to help you study your subjects and your light differently. And you just never know what kind of cool creative situations can arise when you're playing with light that you don't usually work with. So now it's time for the challenge. We are kicking off the hard light food challenge. We're so excited to see what you're gonna create with this. So kicking off on July the 15th through July 21st, we want you to take part in the hard light food challenge. So what does that entail? Well, you're gonna take all of the things that you learned here in my video, as well as Lauren's video, and put that into practice to create a beautiful hard light look. And then you wanna follow the link down below so you can get all the instructions into the challenge and get the information about the Dropbox where you're gonna upload your photos. But that's not it, we're not just ending there. Lauren, you wanna tell them about what we're gonna do on July 25th? So on July 25th, we are gonna be back here on Joni's channel and on my channel. We're gonna be doing back-to-back -back live sessions to go through the hard light photos that you guys shot during the challenge so you can get our feedback. And we're also gonna be announcing the challenge winners. So make sure you sign up on that link and join us back here on the 25th. And then too, if you decide to share your images over on Instagram, feel free to use our hashtag hard light food so that we can give it that thumbs up, that little double tap for the like. But I hope you had a lot of fun in these videos. Again, be sure to hop over to Lauren's video. I've got it linked right here so you can go check it out.